Getting a band eight or nine in IELTS writing is much simpler than you think. Over the course of my career, I have corrected more than 10,000 IELTS essays. I've seen every single mistake that an IELTS student can make from structuring their arguments to making silly vocabulary errors. And one thing that I can tell you is all of these can be easily fixed. Every student that I have worked with that has got a band eight or nine has followed one simple strategy. Understand what the common mistakes are and learn how to fix those common mistakes. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a band six real student essay that is full of the most common mistakes that we see and I'm gonna show you sentence by sentence how to transform that essay it's from a band six to a band eight. So you'll be able to see how simple it is to transform your writing and get the score that you need. So if your aim is to get a band seven, eight or nine in IELTS writing and relocate to the country of your dreams, you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and let's learn how to improve our IELTS writing. So let's start off by looking at this student's essay and figure out why this is a band six, and then I'll show you how to transform it to a band eight. Now, do not skip ahead. If you skip ahead, you're not going to understand why most students get these things wrong. And in my experience, after you know correcting thousands of essays, the students that learn what to avoid do much, much better than the students that just learn a bunch of good things to do in their essay. I know that doesn't make sense, but a lot of things don't make sense about IELTS. Do not skip ahead. Watch this part of the video and understand the bad things to avoid. Everything that we're going to discuss will be related to these. These are the official band descriptors. When your examiner is marking your essay, they are looking at these bands, and this is what they're basing their score on, and only this. So it's really important that you understand why these things lead to a low score. I'll also share the new guidance that was released recently. It's a little bit more detail, and it's released from IELTS, so it's something that you should definitely pay attention to. So let's start off by understanding the question. Very, very important. Some people believe that professionals such as doctors and engineers should be required to work in the country where they did their training. Others believe they should be free to work in other countries. Discuss both views and give your opinion. So the student starts off with nowadays, spelled incorrectly, the crucial debate about professional people working in other countries is raging. So in the very first sentence, the student has made a crucial error. They've made a mistake, which is including a background statement. Now, many of you have been taught because many teachers teach their students to start their essay with a background statement. Why is this wrong and why will this lower your score? Well, a background statement is an example of a memorized sentence or a memorized template. Normally, they will look something like this. Nowadays, the crucial debate about X, so insert the topic, is raging. So what happens when students memorize these things is they will often make mistakes. So, for example, this student, and this is a very, very, very common mistake, they have misspelled the word nowadays as nowadays. If I had a penny for every time I've read the word nowadays, I wouldn't be teaching you IELTS. I'd be on a beach somewhere enjoying myself. The other reason why this is a mistake is more strategic. So you only have about 40 minutes to write your whole essay. You should not include anything that doesn't improve your score. Background statements do not improve your score at all, so including them is wasting time. So anything that wastes time and leads to vocabulary errors, grammar errors, and doesn't improve your score at all is a complete and utter waste of time. You've also created a very bad first impression because as I said, the examiner has seen this a thousand times. In their brain, when they read that, they are automatically thinking, this person is just relying on memorization and templates. They've probably went to a very bad school, had a bad teacher. This essay is going to be bad. Do you want the very first impression to be that? Probably not. It also simply just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Read it. Nowadays, the crucial debate about professional people working in other countries is raging. Is it? Is it actually raging? Is this a debate that a lot of people are having? No. 
There are far more important debates and problems in the world than professional people deciding whether to stay or leave their country. So you have just written something that is complete and utter nonsense. I'd also like to draw your attention to the official marking criteria and what it says for a band zero, where there is proof that a candidate's answer has been totally memorized. Your first sentence is providing proof to the examiner that you do not know how to write. If you knew how to write an essay, you wouldn't use memorized sentences like this. So what some examiners will do is they will discount that entire sentence because it is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't contribute anything to the essay. Let's have a look at the next sentence. Whilst many people believe they should remain in their home country, others say they should have freedom to work anywhere in the world. This essay will endeavor to analyze both side before coming to a reasoned conclusion. And let's look at the official marking criteria to show you why this whole introduction is just a complete waste of time. If we look at band nine for task response, a clear and fully developed position. Band eight, a clear and well-developed position. Band seven, a clear and developed position is presented. And if we look at the guidance for the marking criteria, it says the task response assesses how clearly the candidate opens the discourse, establishes their position and formulates conclusions. So what your position is, is what you think about the question. What do you believe is the answer to the question? So what is the question asking you to do? Well, it's asking you to do three things. Discuss this view, discuss that view and give your opinion three different things. This introduction doesn't do any of those three things. Whilst many people believe they should remain in their home country, that's just repeating the question. It's not saying why, it's not giving any position. Others say that they should have freedom to work anywhere in the modern world. Again, no position. They're just repeating the question. This essay will endeavor to analyze both sides before coming to a reasoned conclusion. This is a memorized sentence again, so not very good but also there is no position, no opinion. Give your opinion, there's nothing here. Now, why do students do this? Well, maybe it's not your fault. I've taught in many, many countries all over the world, especially Asia, and in many countries, I'll not name individual countries, don't worry, I'll not pick on anybody, but in your education system, you are often taught from a very small child not to take a strong position or not to have a strong opinion on anything. This is completely the opposite to the Western education system and how IELTS want you to write essays. They want you to have a strong position and tell them what you think. So if you want to move to a Western country and get a high score on the IELTS test, you have to abandon this idea of not taking any position and just being very wishy-washy about everything. Also, the other reason is many of you go to IELTS schools and IELTS teachers that just teach you this templated memorization technique. The examiners are not dumb. Most of the senior examiners have marked well over 10,000 essays and at least 70, 80% of them look like this. That is why it is extremely rare to get band eight and get band nine, but it is extremely common to get band five, 5.5, six, and 6.5. These are the most common scores. But don't worry, we'll show you how to transform this introduction in a very, very simple way and show you how to tell the examiner exactly what you think about this question in a very simple, effective way. Now, there are also multiple little spelling errors, little spelling mistakes. That is also a problem and is dragging your score down to a band six. I hope you're enjoying this video on IELTS writing. If you want to improve your IELTS writing even more and put all of the things that you're learning from our YouTube channel into practice, I've developed a free course called IELTS Essay Builder. What IELTS Essay Builder does is it gives you a free course that structures everything from your introduction to your main body paragraphs to your conclusions. It shows you step by step, sentence by sentence, how to write everything that you're learning here. And it's 100% free, and it's helped thousands of students get a band seven, eight, and even nine. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description, enter your email address on that page, and we'll send you that free IELTS Essay Builder for free.
Thanks very much, now back to the video. Let's move on to the first main body paragraph. Let's check this out and see if this is good or not. On the one hand, okay, this is a totally acceptable way to show I'm going to discuss this first point. Doctors have a duty to take care of their own people. This is because doctors pay for a doctor's training. Therefore, medical professionals have responsible to give back to nation. Likewise, engineers have many crucial skills that are valuable to their home country. For example, my brother is an engineer who built the high-speed rail network of my home country, which is now the envy of the world. So overall, this is quite good, but there's a couple of major issues here. And if you read this paragraph, if I gave you this paragraph before this video, 80, 90% of students would say, you know, that's quite a good paragraph. They should be getting a high score. But there are a couple of fundamental issues with it. So if we have a look at band six for task response, it says main ideas are relevant. And these ideas are relevant. There's nothing wrong with them, but some may be insufficiently developed or may lack clarity. While some supporting arguments and evidence may be less relevant or inadequate. If we compare that with a band eight, Ideas are relevant, well extended and supported. So this is all about idea development. In other words, did they take each idea and fully explain each idea and provide an example to help support that idea even more? So the problem with this particular paragraph is there are two main ideas instead of one central main idea. So instead of fully developing one idea, they've put in two ideas and they have failed to really fully develop both of them because they just don't have time, they don't have enough room to do that. Now, when I asked the student, why did you do this? They said, well, it says in the question to talk about doctors and engineers. So I talked about doctors first and I talked about engineers. My old teacher, that's what they said, told me that I must talk about everything in the question in order to get a high score. Well, let's have a look at the question and analyze whether that is true or not. Some people believe that professionals such as doctors and engineers, why does it say such as doctors and engineers? Well, professionals is not a very clear, succinct word. It has many different meanings. So by putting such as doctors and engineers into the question, what the people at Cambridge who wrote this question are trying to do is help you understand the word professionals. They are not instructing you that you must talk about doctors and then you must talk about engineers. So by following faulty advice, the student is lowering their score and doing the wrong thing. Remember, the examiners are only following what it says here in the marking criteria. They're not checking in with your local teacher and asking them, well, what did you tell them? Also, this second sentence just doesn't make any sense in relation to the explanation that they're giving. This is because doctors pay for a doctor's training, therefore medical professionals have responsible to give back to nation. When I spoke to the student about this and asked them, it doesn't make any sense, it's confusing. They were like, oh no, I meant to write government. This is because the government pays for a doctor's training, therefore medical professionals have responsible to give back to nation. And the reason why they made this mistake is they were trying to think of way too many things on test day because they were relying on memorization. If you have memorized a bunch of vocabulary, grammar, templates, memorized sentences, you're not really focused on the one thing that you should be focused on, which is answering the question and writing a clear essay. Students that just focus on writing a clear essay, write a clear essay and answer the question. Students that are thinking of 17 different things at the same time, write confusing things like this. If we go back to the marking criteria, may lack clarity. It's not clear. Likewise, engineers have many crucial skills that are valuable to their home country. Okay, what are those skills? How are they valuable? There's no explanation in here. For example, my brother is an engineer who built the high-speed rail network of my home country, which is now the envy of the world. Who cares? Is it really the envy of the world? Or are you just listening to your government telling you that it is the envy of the world? Who cares about your brother? You're very proud of your brother, but that doesn't mean anything to an academic essay. This is just too personal. You should avoid very, very personal examples like this because they only tell the story 
of your brother or your cousin or your mother or whoever you are talking about. And I'll show you how you can convert a very personal example like this that's easy to think about, how to convert it into a band eight example later in the video. So not a bad paragraph, apart from the fact that it is not clear, the ideas are not developed enough, and the example just doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's move on to the next paragraph. On other hand, a mistake right away. So if we look at coherence and cohesion for a band six, cohesive devices, such as on the one hand, on the other hand, are used to some good effect, but cohesion within or between sentences may be faulty or mechanical due to misuse, overuse, or omission. So this student knows what on the one hand, on the other hand means, but because they have memorized it, they don't really know how to use it properly, they've made a mistake. And again, if I had a penny for every time I've seen that mistake, I would be a multimillionaire. It is better to write nothing and not make the mistake than it is to include things that you're not 100% sure about. On the other hand, doctor and engineers might find it difficult to find a job and adapt to society of foreign country. There is always language barrier to face when moving to new country and many doctors require high IELTS score in order to do their job. For example, doctors have to achieve the incredibly high score of 7.5 in most English speaking countries. Engineers may also face a culture shock when they move abroad to a new place. Many engineers have recently moved to Africa to build large infrastructure projects and find the lack of familiar home food and work culture very different from before. So can you spot the major issue in this paragraph? So if you haven't spotted it yet, let's have a look at the question again. So some people believe that professionals such as doctors and engineers should be required to work in the country where they did their training. So in this paragraph, they have covered that point. Others believe they should be free to work in other countries. In this paragraph, they've covered that point. So this paragraph should be about others believe they should be free to work in other countries. But is it? Look at the ideas. The ideas are about why it is difficult to move to a new country, the obstacles someone will face. The question is about should they have the freedom, the right to work in other countries, not about whether it will be difficult or not. So if we have a look at the marking criteria for band seven for task response, the main parts of the prompt are appropriately addressed. For band eight, the prompt is appropriately and sufficiently addressed. So for the second part of the prompt, they're not addressing the question. Their ideas are not relevant. So it's impossible for them to get a band seven or get a band eight. And this is often a problem that you'll get very angry students that can't believe that they got a 6.5 or a six or a 5.5 because they said, I answered the question, I wrote a good essay. No, you didn't. This is why it's so important for you to get someone who is experienced and knows what they're doing to look at your essays and point out your mistakes. The other main issue is they have repeated the same mistake of talking about doctors and then talking about engineers, way too many ideas. There are four main ideas in this essay now. Really, there should only be one in this paragraph and one in this paragraph, and then fully develop each idea. And the good news for this student is their writing is quite good. They don't have a huge problem. They've just been taught the wrong thing. So by fixing a few simple things that we'll show you in the rest of the video, they'll be easily able to move from about six to about seven or even eight. So let's have a look at the conclusion in nutshell. It's not really appropriate in an academic essay to write in nutshell. It's a very informal way of starting a conclusion. How many conclusions will you write on test day? One, how many cohesive devices, linking words, do you need to learn to put at the beginning of your conclusion? One, learn one properly in conclusion. That's simple, easy to use. And I know many of you right now are in the comments saying, can I do it with this? Can I do it with that? Can I do it with this? Just learn one simple thing provided to you by someone who knows what they're doing. Keep it simple. Do not learn 17 different ways to write a conclusion because what will happen is you'll either write something inappropriate or you'll make a mistake. It's in a nutshell. They've missed out the article here. There are plethora spelt incorrectly of reasons for medics and those from an engineering background to remain loyal to their mother country. Like what? Stop 
sitting on the fence. Stop beating around the bush. Give me your position. What do you think about this? At no point in this essay has this student given their opinion. At no point, what is the question asking you to do? Give your opinion. Again, this might not be your fault. You might come from one of those educational backgrounds that you know, for the last 15 years you've been taught not to do that, but it's time to grow up. You're moving to a different country. You need to adopt their ways of doing things. It is recommended they stay at home in order to avoid the hardships such as homesickness many face when they move abroad. The question wasn't asking you to give a recommendation. Why is the student doing this? Because their teacher told them to. So if you are relying on memorizing a template or a structure, you're not really thinking, am I answering the question? All you're thinking about is, what do I put into this part of the structure? Structures are helpful, but they're about you know, less than 5% of your total score. And you should not use them if they're provided to you by someone who doesn't really know what they're doing. So as you've seen, this student is probably going to get a band six for task response, probably going to get a six for coherence and cohesion, but that's only 50% of your total mark. The rest of your mark will be for lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. And this is a very good example of a band six student for grammatical range and accuracy and lexical resource, which is just a fancy way of saying vocabulary. Most students that we are working with that are getting a 6 or 6.5 overall, they don't have bad grammar or bad vocabulary, but they're making way too many small errors. And these little errors add up. So the way that an examiner is thinking about your essay in terms of grammar and vocabulary is not did you use some words like plethora and nowadays and the debate is raging. They don't look at that and go, oh my God, this person is amazing. What they're doing is they are looking at your range, but most importantly, your accuracy. They are counting the number of mistakes. And very, very basically, if more than 50% of your sentences have grammar, vocabulary, spelling errors in them, then you are going to get a band six and it's impossible for you to get more than a band six because all of these little errors add up. So let's take vocabulary. This student doesn't have bad vocabulary, but they're trying to use too many words that they don't really understand. And this is leading to a lot of spelling mistakes and spelling is counted in the lexical resource part of the marking criteria. So nowadays, plethora, endeavor, responsibility, and many other small little vocabulary errors that are present in more than 50% of the sentences. I'll show you a very, very quick and easy way, a simple way to eliminate most of these mistakes and transform your essay from a band six to a band eight later in the video. Same thing with grammar. So most of the students that we work with, most of the essays that I have marked, don't have a huge problem with grammar. Most of the grammar is quite good in this essay, but they have one or two areas of grammar. So that could be articles, punctuation, subject verb agreement, tenses, for example, or other areas of grammar that they have a huge problem with. So if you have a look at this student, you will see that there are multiple article errors. In nutshell, on other hand, might find it difficult to find job, have a responsibility, and over and over and over again. So again, all these small errors just add up. And then when you combine that with lots of spelling mistakes, too many ideas, not answering the question, irrelevant ideas, this all adds up to a student who believes that they're getting a band seven or a band eight, opening up their score on results day and seeing a big fat six. But the good news is, is that you can easily fix all of this and transform it. And over the years, I wish I could have just taken each of these essays and given the student, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of advice and they would have really improved their score and moved to the country of their dreams and had, you know, a very happy, high paying job and all of those good things. So the good news is for you is we're going to do that for you in this video. This video is sponsored by us. IELTS Advantage and the IELTS VIP course. The IELTS VIP course is the most successful IELTS course in the world. That is a fact because we have more band seven, eight and nine success stories than any other IELTS course in the entire world. 
we do that by simplifying the whole IELTS process, supporting you with some of the best IELTS teachers in the world, and being with you every step of the way until you get the score that you need. To thank you for making it this far in the video, I want to give you 10% off our VIP course. All you have to do is just look down in the description, you will see our special link that you need to get 10% off. Just click that and you can sign up. If you have any questions about the VIP course, always feel free to get in touch with us. Chris at IELTSAdvantage.com is my email address. We answer 100% of the questions that we get. Hope that you have become a VIP. If not, enjoy the rest of this free video. So let's rewrite this and transform it from a band six to a band eight. Now, before we look at the introduction, we need to look at the question again. It is the most important thing. A lot of students really focus on structures and memorizing things and taking chunks of essays from teachers out. But really, the students that get a band eight, get a band nine, they focus a lot more on the question, formulating the answer in their brain, and then taking that answer and putting it on paper. That's really what they're testing. Can you look at something, think clearly about it, and then put it clearly on paper? So let's reiterate, what are they asking you to do? They're asking you to do three things. Why do people think this side? Why do people think this side? And what do you think? Now, just to go into a little bit more detail, this is something that we teach our VIP students. It's not why do you think this and why do you think that? It's why do other people think this side? Why do other people think that side? And what do you think? So looking at the question again, you need to be thinking about why do some people believe that they should be required to work in their home country? Why do some people think that? If you ask someone that, what would they say? What is the main idea behind them thinking that? Then others say they should be free to work. Why do they say that? And then the third thing that you need to do is what do you think? Do you agree with this side? Do you agree with that side? Or do you think something slightly different? I'll show you how you can do that all in your introduction. So what we're going to do is take this introduction that is meaningless and we're going to show you how to transform this into an introduction that answers the question, which is what you should be doing. So whilst many people think that professional workers owe a debt to the country they trained in, so what have we done there? We've explained why people believe this side. They believe this side because they think that these doctors, engineers, nurses, lawyers, whoever was trained in that country, they owe a debt, not necessarily money, but they owe that country. They have a responsibility to remain there and work there. So what we've done in that sentence is we have immediately said, this is why people think this. We compare that with, you know, this is a hot topic that is raging and some people think that meaningless to exactly what people think. The difference between these two, we often describe this as a shotgun approach. So this one here is a shotgun approach. If you think about how a shotgun works, you use a shotgun to spray an area and hope that you hit something. Compare that with a rifle. A rifle is one shot, one kill. A rifle is accurate. That is why they are so deadly. Short, to the point, answer the question. Now let's move on to the other side of it. I believe they should be free to work where they choose because they can make more money. So if you asked someone, you know, you're a doctor, engineer, you're a lawyer, you're a nurse, why are you moving to a Western country or an English speaking country? Because I can make more money. If you asked a hundred of them, why are you moving away to make more money? So we don't choose the most complex or the most high level or fancy idea. We choose the simplest, most straightforward, most popular idea because they are easy to understand, easy to write about. One thing many of you are jumping up and down and you know furiously typing, you can't put I, you can't put a personal pronoun in your IELTS essay. Remember what the question says, give your opinion. What do you believe? Easiest way for you to do that is just say, I believe, I think. 
It is my opinion. You're not going to lose any marks for that. In fact, you're going to gain marks because you're making it super duper clear what you think and how you're answering the question. And nowhere does it say in the official marking criteria or the official guidance that you're not allowed to do that. So what have I done with this sentence? I've done two things. This is why these people believe this, because of money. And I agree with them. I believe this too. So you've done all three things in one sentence. Here's what these people think, here's what these people think, and this is what I think. Now many of you will look at this and think, it's not long enough, it's too short. Size does not matter, thankfully. There is nothing in the marking criteria that says your introduction needs to be very long. Like other things in this world, it's not the size that counts, it is what you do with it. I could write a very, very long introduction like the band six student did, but it wouldn't really satisfy the examiner. This one is short, it's small, but it's mighty. In fact, what this does is it shows the examiner that you've understood the question, you've answered the question, and you're telling the examiner what is coming up in the rest of this essay. Because all we need to do now is take this side, write about it in our main body paragraph, fully develop that main idea, then take the other side, fully develop that main idea, and then summarize everything in our conclusion. So that's what we're gonna do now. So in our first main body paragraph, we're going to, like the band six student, we're gonna talk about this first view, but we're going to reduce the number of ideas from two to one. So we're gonna change nothing about the cohesive device on the one hand, showing the examiner. I'm gonna talk about this side first. So on the one hand, professionals often receive considerable funding from their government to become fully qualified. So this is just a much simpler, clearer way of saying the same thing that the band six student said. Doctors have a duty to take care of their own people. This is because doctors pay for a doctor's training. Not very clear. This is much simpler, but clearer. What I have done is put a topic sentence that just clearly states this is the main reason, this is the main idea. There's no explanation here, there's no complexity. You're just saying, this is why people believe this. Now we need to explain why they think this. So big difference between band six and band eight is band six will just state main ideas and not really explain why those ideas are true. Imagine you're arguing with this person. Imagine you're saying, well, why should they do that? You know, I don't agree with you. Can you explain more? It is only fair that they should repay the support by working in that place. So if someone helps you, it is fair, it is the right thing to do to repay them. But again, we need to explain this. Well, why, why is it fair? So we need to continue to explain. So that's the difference again between a band six and a band eight. Band six, when they're writing explanations, they might write just one sentence where as a band seven, band eight, band nine, they will develop that explanation a lot more. They will fully explain it, they will fully develop it so that anyone could read this and understand this person's point. This is because they often do jobs that greatly benefit society and this is why their government invested in them in the first place. So you're explaining why do governments pay for doctors and engineers and lawyers and all of these professional people, why do they pay for that? Is it just to keep them happy, to keep them busy? No, it's actually quite selfish. They do it so that that investment pays off in the future. Normally governments and politicians don't do things just to make people happy. They do it to get a benefit. So we're explaining that. And also, I made a mistake here. And don't worry, band eight, band nine is not about writing the perfect essay without any mistakes, without any messiness. You can easily just cross something out and continue on. You're not gonna lose marks for that. And band nine students even make little slips. It says that in the marking criteria. So we fully explained that. What we need to do now is we need to include an example to support that. So remember the example of like my brother, built the railways all by himself. 
what you can do is you can take a personal example. So I actually do have a member of my family that is a doctor and the government did pay for them. I was a lawyer and the government paid all of my university fees. So I got a law degree and went to law school for free. Now, I do have those examples in my brain, but they're too personal. I'm not going to write, for example, my brother is a doctor and the UK government paid for everything. But I can take that personal example and I can expand it to talk about the general idea, the general population. And it's not just my brother, it's thousands of doctors every single year that are trained by the UK government. So take my brother, expand it out. The UK pays for thousands of doctors every year. So for example, the UK, let's put spends, it's a little bit more accurate. Millions of pounds training junior doctors through university tuition fees and on the job training. So as you can see, we've taken multiple ideas. We've reduced that idea down to one relevant idea that answers the question, fully explained that idea, and then supported it with an example that makes sense. Now we're going to move on to the second paragraph where we're going to show the counter argument. We're going to show the other side of it because that's what the question is asking us to do. Apologies, this is going to look really messy. I'm thinking about what to say to you guys and thinking about the cameras instead of focusing on what I'm doing. However, every individual should have the opportunity to reach their maximum potential. So I'm showing the counter argument. These people think that governments pay lots of money, so they should stay and pay off that debt. However, other people think you should have the freedom to earn as much money as you would like to. So what I'm doing here is I'm explaining it. And what I do is I use this so what technique. Whenever I was in English class, I had an English teacher. And what he would do is he would walk over, look over your shoulder and point to topic sentences, point to ideas and say, so what? He would do it very violently. I'm not going to do that with you. Um, but what that English teacher was trying to beat into me was explain what you mean. So they should have the opportunity to reach their maximum earning potential. What does that mean? Well, those in the professions, those jobs, are some of the most highly skilled, highly sought people in the world. So what? Keep explaining. There is a global market for their skills and they can command much higher salaries by moving abroad. So you could go into a lot more detail. You could talk about globalization and post-globalization that now we live in a world where there is one market for labor. It's a very complicated thing, but a very simple way of saying it is there is a global market for their skills and they can command much higher salaries by moving abroad. If they move abroad, they make more money. More money is good. They should be able to do that. So what? Keep explaining. If they were blocked from doing so, it would be a substantial financial disadvantage for the individual. So this would be a bad thing. If people were not allowed to leave, imagine you're a doctor or a nurse and you're not allowed to leave your home country that would be a very, very bad thing and you wouldn't be happy about that. So we've just explained that. Put yourself in the shoes of that person. A big difference between a band six student and a band eight student is you will often hear band six students saying, I don't know anything about this. I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an engineer. But you have an imagination, you have a brain. You can put yourself in the shoes of that person. Imagine you are a highly qualified doctor making $10,000 a year and you could be making $110,000 a year in an other country. Would you be happy if they blocked you from leaving the country? So we fully explained that. Next, we need to think of an example. Personally, I don't know anybody in this position because I live in a free country where you're allowed to come and go as you please. But I can think of other jobs where you can earn a lot more money by moving countries. An obvious one that springs to mind would be petroleum engineers. You know, I live in Ireland, there's no oil or gas here or very, very little. If you're a petroleum engineer in Ireland, 
you are at a huge financial disadvantage. But if you can move somewhere that has lots of oil and gas, you will make a huge amount of money. So let's use that as, as an example. And that will also use the question, doctors, engineers, we've given the example of doctors here. We're going to give another example of engineers here. So to those people that think, oh, you didn't answer the question. Well, we just did. You don't have to do that. Again, we're using the question to help us. So for instance, petroleum engineers can make hundreds of thousands of dollars more in oil rich countries such as Saudi Arabia compared to remaining in Europe. Is this true? Yes. Is it related to the main idea? Yes. So this part, we've only really talked about why people believe this side. We need to reiterate our opinion. Remember, we're doing those three things. That wasn't done in the second main body paragraph in the original essay. And the easiest way to do that is, I agree. I agree that the individual's right to work wherever they please trumps any nationalistic considerations. The individual, a person's right to work wherever they want is more important than some nationalistic belief that you know everyone should stay at home. Okay, let's change this conclusion. So we're gonna change in nutshell to just simply in conclusion. So we're not gonna talk about plethora of reasons. We're going to actually state the reasons. We are going to summarize our main points. So we're gonna say, these people think this, other people think that, I believe this. And do not worry about repeating yourself. So in the original conclusion, the person really didn't take a position and they were introducing some new ideas because often people are taught that your conclusion cannot repeat any of the ideas in your essay. This comes from a misunderstanding of what a conclusion is and what an essay is. And really it's confusion about not repeating words. So many, many teachers believe that if you repeat a word, you will get a low score. A lot of them confuse that with not repeating main ideas. A conclusion is a, by definition, a summary of the main ideas of the essay. That is what it is. If you disagree with me, then you don't know what a conclusion is. So in conclusion, although there is a tremendous amount of investment in a professional's development, so I'm conceding, I'm saying, yes, there is this argument. There is a huge amount of money poured in to training these people. I recognize that. So you're conceding that and you're just summarizing what is in that first main body paragraph. They should have the right to choose whether to repay that by working in their home state or moving to a region that pays them the highest value for their skills. Sorry, that is very messy. This has taken hours to make and my brain is turning to mush. I should have really produced this essay and wrote this essay before writing it all out. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm conceding, yes, this is what people think, but this is what other people think and I agree with them. I believe this. There's no recommendation, there's no prediction. It is just stating the main points and stating what I think. Now, if we look at the whole essay, I'm a native English speaker, I could have used a lot fancier high level vocabulary, but I choose not to because you're not being judged on how fancy your vocabulary is. You're being judged on how topic specific it is and how accurate it is. It also reduces complexity, which it reduces mistakes, reduces grammar errors. That is far, far better and a more realistic representation to you guys about what a band eight and band nine essay looks like. After marking thousands and thousands of essays, I can truly tell you that people who get a band eight and band nine, their essays look simple and easy to understand. In fact, let me tell you a quick story. Whenever I used to teach in the classroom, what I would do is I would get band six essays like this and band eight and nine essays like this. And on the first day of class, I would put them up on the walls of the classroom and I would give students stickers. One said band six, one said band eight, band nine. And I would get them to put the stickers on the essays. 
99% of students always got them wrong because what students believe is band eight and band nine is a complex essay with lots of complex ideas, complex grammar, complex vocabulary. What students are always shocked by is how simple and easy to understand band eight and band nine essays actually are. And what I always said to the students was, what are they testing? Are they testing how much fancy stuff you know? Or are they testing your ability to communicate clearly in writing using English? They are testing the latter. They're testing when you move to a new country, when you move to London or Singapore or Sydney or New York or wherever English speaking city you move to, can you clearly communicate with people? And you do that by avoiding all of the mistakes that are commonly in these essays and replacing it with simple, easy to understand language and clear, easy to understand ideas. If you do that, your writing will improve dramatically. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope that it really helped you understand what the common mistakes are. If you want to see how I transformed a different type of essay from a band six to a band eight, just click on this video and I'll show you exactly how I did it.